with the 2005 Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, there was finally a successful heir to the throne of the original. Hollywood had that rare combination of an artistically successful and commercially successful vehicle to go on with the series. So an odd move then to make a prequel, which effectively drew the story back. The resulting film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning, is even more of a remake than the remake. This one would feature a second major writing credit for David J. Shao in the series. Now, Shao is an amazing writer whose short stories collected in a book called Seeing Red are some of the best modern horror short stories you could possibly find. He hasn't been exactly lucky with adaptations of his work to the big screen, and this one is not an exception. Because while it really nails the nilist mood of the original film, it doesn't carry the grit of the original, and the results are, well, less than satisfying. Gorehounds will be pleased. Everyone else will be scratching their head about what all that meant, or what was even the point. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was birthed in the, in the blood of the 1970s. Race riots, Vietnam, political corruption, and just general uncertainty. The Ramones had it right when they were talking about it being the end of the century, the end of the world. That's what it felt like in the 70s. And that's what this film attempts to take and personify. Now, the problem is, of course, that it's not the 1970s, and we all know how this story ends. It doesn't end with that apocalypse or social decline that was predicted. Instead, we survived and actually went through a period of rebirth during the 1980s. This film has to successfully navigate through all that and pretend it didn't happen in order to successfully tell its story. And that's a big hurdle. The film opens with probably the most unpleasant imagery in the entire franchise. A baby being born on a slaughterhouse floor and then being dumped in a dumpster. This sort of unpleasantness at face value is an easy match to the original film's ferocity. But it also feels a little bit like a fairy tale, kind of like the baby abandoned to a small boat on a river. The issue is that gritty realism of the original partially came from not explaining the family. The family was a representation of America's future, or perhaps present in the 1970s, certainly the fears of our neighbors and what they were descending into. To create a mythology to these characters, especially one as imposing as Leatherface, robs them of a certain amount of their power. At any rate, from there we meet our main cast and the two main male characters are traveling cross country in order to enlist in the military to go fight in Vietnam. This is making the subtext of the original film very explicit, in fact, too explicit. It's telling us how we're supposed to feel. It suggests a kind of youthful naivety about the war and about the place of patriotism in society and where blind patriotism leads. The movie doesn't really know what to do with it though because all that work had already been done in the first film and this doesn't really repeat the first film's thematics, it just references them. Kind of like those quote-unquote parody films that think that simply mentioning another piece of art is tantamount to a joke. Here we're supposed to get a kind of vicarious horror off of the first film simply by remembering it. That said, this is one of the grimmer chapters in not just this franchise, but in horror history. It's a bleak film with a downer of an ending and an almost unrelentingly nihilist mood. It joins films like Alien 3 and Miracle Mile that kind of candidly suggest that no matter how much we might want a happy ending, happy endings aren't real. Sad then, the movie never really gives us a character worth rooting for. The best characters are all the characters that it inherited from the previous film, the first remake, and those are villains. So this places the audience in a weird capacity. He were there as a spectator to the carnage, and we only really know or care about characters who are inflicting the evil. That's usually not a successful mode for horror unless we're talking about something like Splat Stick, which preys on the fact that we release tension through gallows humor. That's not present here. And the gore scenes, which were liberated by the MPA's recent hands-off approach to violence on screen, is much denser and more disturbing than ever before. 
but it also doesn't have the emotional stakes to back it up, so it's ultimately not very successful. The film's ending, although extraordinarily brave, ending on such a downer note, is also oddly defeatist, because after going through this journey, we end up in no different place than we were before we watched the remake, which was a foregone conclusion, but at least we could have gotten something more. We could have learned more. We could have had some light illuminate the darkness of that film. But then again, that would have robbed it of even more power. Prequels are always dangerous and rarely successful, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning is exactly why. It's a well-made film that looks and sounds and is acted very well. Jordana Brewster is physically the right girl from the job and a good enough actress to pull off this role twice over. But there's nothing really for her to latch on to. And up against Jessica Biel's performance in the previous film, she was always going to struggle not because she's not Beale's equal as an actress, but because no actor can overcome a screenplay that doesn't give them much to do. And the story beats here are oddly familiar. It's as if the filmmakers wanted to remake the 74 film, but give it the ending that no film in 1974 would have gotten away with. That's not a good enough reason to watch a feature length film, let alone a reason to make one. But that's what we're expected to buy here. Do I hate the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning? No. I find it oddly mediocre, even in its extremity. But I really ask the question, did we need it? And while we don't need any films, you need to give the audience a sense that they achieved something by watching it, that they learned something, that they were a place, that they felt something that they hadn't before. And this film does none of that. So, it's not a bad way to waste an hour and a half, I guess, but it's not necessarily going to add anything to the mythos of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and certainly nothing to its reputation.